60 miles southeast of Anchorage lies Prince William Sound, a saltwater bay surrounded by rugged cliffs. No highway leads to the seaport city of Whittier, but during the summer months, the Alaska Railroad operates a passenger service along a 12-mile stretch of coastline between the Portage Rail Station and the seaport. Even without a reason for going to Whittier, the scenery makes the trip worthwhile. Passengers are awed by the picturesque Bear Valley enclosed by snow-capped mountains. Whittier was spawned during World War II as a seaport and petroleum center. Today, it boasts a thriving sport fishing industry. Wendy Simpson, owner of a local charter service, takes visitors like these folks from Anchorage out for a never-to-be-forgotten cruise in beautiful Prince William Sound. So are we the crew? Yeah, um, this type of sailing is known as hands-on charter, since the guest will be doubling as the crew. From setting the mainsail to swabbing the decks, they'll come back with enough sailing experience to join up with Sinbad. Even though the chief deckhand is rather young, he's obviously experienced beyond his years. When I go out on the boat, I, this year I have my little boy Sean, he's six and he crews for me, he's a big help. Well, I do a lot of crewing job and I jump off the boat and get the line set and do other stuff like that. I really enjoy having Sean out on the boat with me. He's a lot of fun on the charters. People enjoy him for the most part. I also have to tell the people kind of what to do on the anchor. There's the anchor. Four hundred miles south of the Arctic Circle would seem a strange place to find the recreational boater. Yet, as thousands of visitors discover each summer, nothing can beat Prince William Sound for smooth sailing and breathtaking beauty. The Prince William Sound is probably the most uh, beautiful place you can possibly imagine. It's like 95 miles long and 95 miles deep, and it's just all these really beautiful islands that are um, just littered around in this uh, generally very calm ocean. The marine mammals here are just tremendous. We have uh, lots of porpoise. They come and play with the boats all the time. And I'm a porpoise expert. Often, strange sights can be witnessed in the secluded inlets and bays of Prince William Sound. It's wrecked. Why is it wrecked? From 30 miles of wind. How many people were killed? None. This rotting hull once served as a fish cannery, floating about wherever the fishing was lively. A violent storm beached the ship and brought an end to the enterprise. How many years ago did this happen? Very long. 30,000 years ago. Probably How many? How 30, many? 30,000. On 300. The earthquake from 1964 was epicentered about 20 miles from Whittier and it had a major effect on this area. The earthquake itself shook pretty bad here, but what happened afterwards was uh, 
was just really amazing. This tidal wave came in and washed up to the fifth story of the Biggage Towers. There were some railroad cars that were on the tracks over here, and when the wave washed out, they ended up sitting on a beach about five miles from here on the other side of the canal. The scattered train cars are grim reminders of the raw power that nature unleashed. The 50-foot waves that ripped through Whittier two decades ago traveled at the speed of 450 miles per hour. Teaching people how to sail is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put up the mainsail. So the first thing we want to do is take off... Sometimes it's a little cover. confusing, but I think for the most part, sailing is basically a pretty simple thing to do. And if people are given instruction, they can learn pretty quickly. This is the halyard, the main halyard. You're going to take it loose from the bungee cord here. Then you're going to set your foot there, reach up. That little hole there, stick this through it. That's what we'll use to lift the mainsail up. The old cliches of feeling the salty breeze, watching the spray off the bow, and the billowing sails all seem to come alive when preparing to set sail in the waters of the sound. Even inexperienced landlubbers manage to get the hang of things and feel like old sea dogs by the time a brisk northern breeze fills the mainsail. and inlets of Prince William Sound create a length of coastline that is greater than the rest of the U.S. coastline combined. Sailing through island-flanked channels, you begin to understand why Alaska is called the Great Land. Peaceful meditations are interrupted by a sticky halyard, and the chief deckhand gets to show us his stuff. Come here. But I got the halyard wrapped around the, uh, the spreader up there, honey. I'm going to hoist you up, and I want you to get up there, and I want you to get it loose. Gears and pulleys give the boy wings. Okay, can you grab it there? To function at such dizzying heights takes guts and courage. Sean is certainly earning his keep on this trip. The chief deckhand seems reluctant to return to the deck. <laughs> you better let go of this. You better let go. Come on. Time to come down. Come on. Now. Sean. Old seafarers say you don't argue with the skipper if he, or in this case she, is bigger than you. Because if and you do, you may have to taste the salt. Of course, if things get too warm while basking in the Arctic sun, relief is only a short splash away. But water temperatures are more suited for polar bears. Not 
every adventure is found on the waves, so they cut loose the dinghy and go ashore. A remote island offers the sailors a chance to do some exploring on solid ground. An afternoon stroll through lush green meadows dotted with wildflowers. Look at these. Salmon berries, moss berries, cranberries, and raspberries are part of the treasures that can be found growing wild, just waiting to be picked. Look. A sunny summer day. A young boy and a berry-stained face, all fit perfectly into a picture Norman Rockwell might have envisioned. Good. With satisfied stomachs, the adventurers leave the berries and head for the boat. But bringing up the rear, the chief deckhand gathers a few extra for the crew to savor in the days ahead. The Sound's sparkling blue waters are teeming with sea life. Anticipating a gourmet dinner makes the crew anxious to bring in the crab pots. Okay, let's carry it down to the end. Let's carry it down this way. Nobody will be late for supper tonight. Fresh caught crab is a feast not to be missed. Think of it, a crab salad, shredded crab on toast, a crab Louis Supreme. Oh, too bad. The pot came up without crab. So, who wanted to eat the slimy crustaceans anyway? It's like an octopus or something. Hey, what about a starfish souffle? Marinated in white wine? Sautéed with mushrooms? I guess they'll have to break out the sea rations. A day of sailing in the magnificent Prince William Sound can be a humbling experience. The soaring snow-capped peaks that give way to a vibrant symphony of greens and ice blue waters that make all other settings pale in comparison. When the salty northern air bites into the canvas, moving it along over the living sea, it gives passengers an opportunity to see Alaska at its best. Others may have been here before, but to you it was virgin territory, and you were the intrepid explorer. A fantasy, a dream, a summer playground called Prince William Sound. The seaport town of Seward, Alaska is an ideal place to begin a deep sea fishing adventure. The majestic Kenai Mountains serve as a backdrop while area guide Wayne Bond powers his fishing trawler across Resurrection Bay. Today it's laden with bait, supplies, and an Oregon couple anxious to try their luck at bottom fishing. En route to their intended fishing spot, they are surprised by what sounds like water mammals at a Tupperware party. This must be some kind of sun tanning haven for sea lions, as bulls and cows alike take in a few rays. Always anxious for a snack, they all go after a thrown herring in a big way. They may look awkward, but these animals are about the size and weight of a Volkswagen. Could you imagine a VW trying to clamber onto those rocks? There is quite a bit of confusion out there as 2,000 pound bulls scramble for the 10 ounce herring. The shallow water surrounding these cliffs and the abundant marine life make this area prime feeding grounds for this rookery of sea lions. Hate to break up the party, but the hors d'oeuvres were running low and the onboard herring supply was intended for bottom fish, halibut and the like. So, while Wayne selects the spot, hooks are baited and last minute instructions are given. Okay, when you drop your pole down, just let it hit the bottom until you feel the weight bump, and then just keep it a bump out. Okay. 
Bottom fish, as their name implies, prowl around on the bottom, wherever that is. How will I know when it's down to the bottom? You'll feel a bump from the weight when it hits the bottom, and then you, you want to keep the weight bumping on the bottom so you can catch the bottom fish. Will I know if the fish is on? If it's real small, he'll just wiggle your arm. When he's a little bigger, you'll just see your pole go dip real hard and then just pull up real fast. Okay. In a few minutes... Now it's a game of patience and waiting. But no time to relax, because when a halibut strikes, it'll require every ounce of strength just to hang on to the rod. This is really strong! <laughs> It just doesn't seem possible that something that small could put up such an incredible fight. It must be all muscle, but what a taste. The lines are put out again and bounced on the bottom. It's the halibut's turn to make a move, and he's got surprise on his side. The strain on that pole, bending it towards the water, indicates that whatever's been hooked isn't quite ready to be hauled in, and won't be till after a lengthy struggle. We had something in. Like a red snapper, little one. It may look like one, but it's not a red snapper. Those are only found in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a red or scarlet rockfish. And while they may be good eating, this fisherman decides to test their powers as an aphrodisiac. Give me a kiss, sweetie. Oh, God. They have a big mouth on them, don't they? Well, they'll never replace oysters. But getting back to bottom fishing, another one's been hooked. And this time, the struggle is certain to bring on a major arm ache. A halibut should be tricked, not played, as with other fish. The idea is to gently coax them up from the depths to the surface of the water. That's a big one. How much do you think that weighs? Oh, I've got it. Pretty good, though. <laughs> oh, All right. Nice little chicken. Well, those are pretty good eating, aren't they? They're the best. Dinner will be special tonight. Halibut steaks sautéed in the memories of deep sea fishing in Resurrection Bay. The Kenai River is known the world over as the breeding ground of giant king salmon. Camping and recreational facilities near the river host sportsmen from every part of the globe, eager to whet their appetite for this king of the salmon. It's not important whether you fish from a boat or off the bank. Just get your hook in the water and get set for the fight of your life. Whether you go it alone or pick up an experienced guide like Harry Gaines, the challenge is still finding a king hungry enough to go for your hook. Fish in the river are not limited to kings, but while sockeye are exciting to land, a king is the real prize you came to the Kenai for. The familiar net in the air signals just one thing, a king is on, warning other anglers to avoid cutting across the straining line. Every sportsman, whether young or old, has their own system of enticing the fish to take the hook. Some are just more vocal about it. Hey guys, no wonder we haven't caught a fish. We haven't done the fish call yet. Well, let's do so it. Come on, join me. Give me an L. Yeah. Yeah. Give me an I. Yeah. Louder, give me an S. Yeah. Give me an H. Yeah. Hey, what's your spell? Yeah. Say it again, fish. 